bless him for who he is for the lord is good the lord is good the lord is good god is great and greatly to be praised hallelujah in the city of our god hallelujah in the mountain of his holiness we bless the name of the lord it's so good to be in the house today it's a blessing to be here it's an honor to come together for the purpose of worshiping our God. And we say to God, be the glory for the things the Lord has done, for the thing He, the things the Lord has done. We are so grateful to God. As we enter for worship, we enter with our hands lifted up and our hearts filled with praise, with hearts of thanksgiving. We bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. Come on, get a praise on your lips. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We give God praise, we give him glory, we give him honor for the things he has done. Father, we thank you. We thank you this Lord's Day. We thank you this Sunday. We thank you for what you've done, for who you are, for what you are yet doing in our lives. We give you praise and we give you glory. For this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are so grateful, O oh God, for your goodness, for your mercy, for your loving kindness is better than life to us, O oh God. And we bless you for that. This afternoon, oh God, we give you praise and even as we are lifting up families that are experiencing loss and detachment even in our congregation, transition of loved ones, oh God. We lift up this afternoon the Hope fam family, oh God. We lift up the Gaines family, God. We pray for our members at large, oh God, that you would lift the hearts, oh God, lift the heavy burden, oh God, L allow them to know that you are with them. Father, we lift up those who may be experiencing health challenges, oh God, for you are the great physician. You are a healer, oh God. We thank you for healing bodies, touching minds. And Father, we even thank you for saving souls. Father, this afternoon we lift up not just those father who we are duty bound to pray for but father we lift up this afternoon oh god we lift up uh, uh, bishop cross oh god as he cares for his wife aunt oh god we lift them up god we lift her up even at this time in her life oh god we pray for her we pray for her comfort. We pray for her peace, oh God, even through this time. And Father, we thank you for giving her husband, Bishop Cross, oh God. We thank you for giving him strength, even, Father, now, Father, even as they look, even at this point of almost 66 years of marriage, oh God, we lift them up, oh God, as he cares for her through this time in her life, oh God. We lift them up and we pray for the family. We lift up uh, our pastor, uh, Gail, oh God, as she is concerned about her aunt, oh God, and her uncle. God, we lift her up, oh God. We lift the family up. We lift the whole body of Christ up, Father, all of the church members that are connected, oh God. We lift them up. We thank you for touching, for healing for delivering, for giving peace, for giving comfort, for giving strength. Whatever it is you are doing in our lives, we thank you for it now. We give you praise because we know that your word says that in everything we give thanks. In everything we give thanks. Even though we may not uh, be excited for it, we give you thanks in it, oh God. And we thank you for doing it now. We thank you for blessing us now. We thank you for delivering us now. We thank you for healing us now. We thank you for touching us now. We thank you for strengthening, strengthening us now. We thank you, God, for making ways out of no ways, touching hearts in our behalf. Oh, God, we thank you 
We give you praise and we give you glory. Father, now we ask that you allow the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart to be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. We say thank God and amen. Come on, we give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will praise thee forever for thou hast done it. We're excited about this opportunity as we are in uh, our final day of our corporate consecration of the Global Harvest Fellowship uh, Churches, Fellowship and Churches and Leaders. We've been in consecration for 21 days. This makes 21. Amen. Our theme has been focus, focus, and we have been enjoying the benefits of focus. Amen. And God teaching us through God's word, through prayer, and through meditation. Today, our scripture, uh, our consecration scripture is Philippians 4, 8, and 9. And this version, particular version, reads, From now on, brothers and sisters, if anything is excellent and if anything is admirable, focus your thoughts on these things. All this is true. All that is holy. All that is true. All that is just. All that is pure. All that is lovely. And all that is worthy of praise. Focus your thoughts on these things. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Oh, we're excited today. We're excited about God's word. We're excited about the peace that comes through God's word. And we're excited about this time of worship, this time of praise. How many folks are ready to worship the Lord? Amen. Amen. I'm ready to continue worship. I'm ready to continue praise. Minister Carmen is coming, leading us, and we're excited about that this afternoon. Amen. I want you to get your praise on. Amen. We're not going to let her praise alone. She's leading us into worship. Amen. Come on, let's start it. Let's start it. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, please don't let me praise it by myself. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, O oh God, for you are worthy to be praised. So I invite you, I invite you to sing, to clap your hands, to get moving with me today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is worthy.
adore him. Bless your name. Hallelujah. We've come to worship you for who you are, God. Hallelujah. You have many names. Thank you. 
Just tell the Lord, thank you one more time. Hallelujah. There's a thank you that I can't get rid of. Amen. There's a thank you. There's a thank you. Amen. There's a thank you. There's a thank you. Hallelujah. And I'm so grateful for God and God's faithfulness. Uh, as we worship the Lord today, uh, we're just mindful of all that God has said and God has done. It's tough when you're in, been in consecration and you're in coming out of the, the last day of consecration. It's so, it's so interesting because we've been together as a fellowship, not just our local thinking church, the church here, but all of our churches, all of our leaders, all of our members have been in consecration for 21 days. And that unity is so powerful. But I love it because I remind the church that consecration is not something we do. It is who we are. It's not only something we do. Yes, we consecrate. But I remind us that we are people of the consecration. We are consecrated people. Amen. And so I love what God is saying to us and what God is doing as we continue to focus. Tell somebody the focus doesn't stop here. The focus it doesn't stop here. It just intensifies. It just intensifies. So I'm excited about that. Amen. I want us to bless the Lord in our giving uh, while we have this moment, this moment, because uh, as we get into the word of God, I want to just push forward. I want to push forward. So those of you that are joining us uh, this afternoon as we get our gifts, amen, and prepare to share uh, our tithe and our offering, uh, we do this in faithfulness to our God because God is faithful to us, amen. So we prove faithful to God, amen. The Bible reminds us that we can give and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Worship is a part of our, worship is a part, uh, giving is a part of our worship, excuse me. Giving is a part of our worship. And when we worship, we give. When we give, we worship. Amen. That's why we do what we do. So we affirm, Father, we know that you have a financial plan for the believer called tithe and offering. And at this moment, 
we set our heart to tap into your financial plan for us. The enemy will not rob us anymore in our finances. In the name of Jesus, by faith, we are at this moment planting our financial seed into your field. We are doing it because we know that it is a biblical truth that in return for our financial faithfulness, you supply all of our need and provide above our need. Uh, those of you that are giving uh, electronically, our cash app is dollar sign thinking church dollar sign thinking church so if you're sharing uh, giving electronically it is dollar sign thinking church dollar sign thinking church and so we share our gifts to the lord amen come on let's give giving us a praise. Hallelujah. We sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah. Let's do our God. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Repeat after me. I have given, therefore I receive. I have given cheerfully, therefore I receive cheerfully. Good measure pressed together, shaken down, and running over, shall it be given to me cheerfully, says the word of God. Y'all knew I meant pressed down, shaken together, running over. <laughs> I had this, I have so much going on, song going on in my head, and, and our affirmation is amen, but it is through our God, amen. Get your Bibles while we're in that frame of mind of praise. Get your word. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the word of God. I will never be the same Never, never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Somebody just tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Father. We give God praise. We give God praise. Amen and amen. I'm excited about the word. Anybody love the word? Yes. Amen. I love the word. Just say, tell somebody around you, I love the word. If, if that's you, just tell them I love the word. Psalm 27. Psalm 27. Uh, as we are unfolding uh, this text, I believe that God will speak to us. Psalm 27. And I am reading from uh, the NIV, uh, I will be back and forth between the NIV and uh, maybe a little bit from the New Revised Standard, amen, but I want us to uh, just allow the Lord to speak to us, amen, amen. through his word. Verse 1 says, Psalm 27, and I'm going to read all 14 verses Normally, I just read one or two, but today I'm going to read all 14 that says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Somebody say the stronghold. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. 
the war rise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry. Be gracious to me. Answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help, do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O oh God, my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O oh Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witness have risen against me and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And this last verse is where I wanna just stake our claim. Wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Again, verse 14, wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. We say thanks be to God. Shall we pray just for a moment? Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by thy power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. My will be lost in thine. This word, as we come to this point in our lives, I've been excited about this word, I gotta tell you, and though I may not be able to do it justice today, I'm excited about what God is saying. Somebody say, God is speaking, God is speaking. We just gotta listen, amen. God is speaking, we just have to listen. I will tell you that I came about this word just uh, as I do many times, sometimes in conversation. Uh, a lot of times I am in conversation. Last week, uh, the word as I was talking about, let them grow together last week, talking about let them grow together, uh, that came out of a conversation with one of our uh, leaders, pastor and leaders, Elder Brenda Kitchen. We were going back and forth after her uh, workshop and class on last Saturday, uh, talking about leadership and how uh, we look at what God has given us in the people of God and how uh, we have to understand that God always gives us not just one kind of people, but God gives us diversity. Uh, I love diversity. I am uh, uh, spent years as a diversity coach and trainer, uh, uh, teaching diversity and inclusion. And I love talking about diversity because uh, uh, we look at diversity in a very positive and, and powerful light when we are open uh, uh, to do as uh, Pastor Gail told us on yesterday in her class, when we are able to realize that our church doors, in most cases, says all are welcome. All are welcome. And we have to examine our lives and make sure we really mean that. Because 
I'm under the influence that some churches doors should say some are welcome. Some are welcome. Why? Because though we say all are welcome, many times we realize that after we get to uh, the crux of the matter, all are not welcome. And so it is with messages like this that I come to this place where uh, just a few weeks ago, some weeks ago, me and, and my brother, pastor friend, uh, 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 I call him Bishop, Bishop Dean Staley, uh, we had gone to breakfast and as we do or go to lunch or, or get together and hang out in Asheboro or in High Point, either I'll go to him or he'll come to me and we were uh, sharing and talking about uh, many times we get to preaching with each other. And uh, we were, you know how you know how preachers do it. It ain't long before we start preaching, a amen. Because we love God, we love God's word. We enjoy uh, the conversation about the things of God. I get nervous around people uh, uh, who don't like the things of God. Now, don't get it twisted. Every one of my friends, we cut up, amen. We, 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 we. I don't. I got friends that every one of them are balanced. They laugh as hard as they pray, amen. They cut up as hard as they consecrate. Amen. And I mean that in a positive way. Amen. We love to have fun. I, I don't hang with no folks that don't love to have fun. You can't, you can't be balanced and not be able to. You can't, you can't just always want to be praying and, 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 and speaking in tongues. No, when we go to the restaurant, we go to eat. We say the blessing and we go to eat. There's a time and a place for everything. Amen. Uh, some folks don't know how uh, to be what they need to be, where they need to be. Amen. Uh, we become sometimes all things to all that we may win some. And so you got to know how to how to be discreet and know where to be, what you need to be, when you need to be it. Amen. Amen. Don't, it doesn't matter. Sometimes folks have asked us to pray for them right in a restaurant and we'll do just that. Why? Because we understand opportunities. And he and I were talking about how in church how and in life we deal with people, not just in church, but in life and people many times that will come. And ask us certain things and, and we work with folks and, and so many times people hear us and so many times they don't. Uh, you know, you, you've seen that before. Uh, folks are trying to help and, and they, they, you know, you think they're listening and then you realize who you're talking to. And, and you know, it's just a matter of time. They, they're going to do what they want to do. And, and the thing we got to the, the conclusion was uh, sometimes you don't have to say nothing. You don't have to do nothing. All you got to do is just wait for it. <laughs> Tell somebody, wait for it. Uh, that's my message today. Wait for it. <laughs> Uh, sometimes we think we gotta we gotta go and uh, plus and, and no you don't have to do all of that. Sometimes you don't have to do a thing. All you gotta do is wait for it. <laughs> Some of y'all get that in a little bit. Why? Because so many times we we're going through all of these changes and we already know the truth, right? We've seen this movie. We know how it is. All you gotta do is what? Wait for it. Right? All you got to do is wait for it. Uh, such as where we come to today. You got to understand, even in sharing uh, this word today, uh, as we talk about this text and understanding that who is talking about this message today, it is me. Uh, who am I? I'm the person who have preached for a long time. I I'm the person that talks about uh, that, that I'm the now preacher. What's the now mean? No one waits. Y'all heard me preach that talk about uh, the fact that I'm a believer in now. I'm the preacher who preaches against what I call the gospel of delay. Yes. What is that gospel of delay where everybody given a word and that word is delayed three days. That word is delayed seven days. In seven days, God going to do this and then. 10 days, God going to do this, and by this time next week, and, and by this time next year, and, and everything is delayed. Everything is delayed. Some of these words are so delayed to by the time you get to that time that they delayed you, you forgot what you were believing for. 
You don't forgot what you were praying for. You don't forgot what was supposed to be going on. Because it's always a delay. It's always something we waiting for. Something that you got by this time and by this date and by this month and by this year. And three days and seven days and ten days and, and thirty days within a month. And God began to say to me uh, that so many times we don't have to under, we don't have to worry about the date, the time. Amen. Because God knows what God is doing. Matter of fact, it is that understanding that I come to with the kingdom of God. Why? Because if we are kingdom people, we don't have to worry about all these days, all these delays, all of these, what God, uh, what people claim God is doing when. Why? Because we understand if we are in the kingdom, Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is what? It is in the here and now. The kingdom of heaven is what? At hand. The day of salvation is when? Now. Uh, if folks had to wait for seven days before they got saved, we'd be in trouble. Uh, notice God doesn't, the kingdom of God, of heaven, is without delay. It comes, the Bible says, without delay. Somebody says it's not delaying. There's no delaying in the kingdom. The kingdom is present. The kingdom is at hand. The kingdom is now. And what I'm trying to get people to become are, are, are less emotional, less uh, driven by stuff, less driven by all of this stuff, this uh, uh, trinkets and, 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 and cliches and, and get more into the presence of God. Why? Because the presence of God is what? Here and now. And so you say, well, here's Bishop uh, uh, talking about uh, from the uh, attack, from the subject, wait for it. Yet he's the now preacher. He's the he's the no one waits preacher. But you got to understand this is really kind of a, a juxtaposed message, right? It is a juxtaposed message, meaning uh, it's two things placed side by side with contrasting effects. Two things placed side by side with contrasting uh, effects. That's what a, a juxtaposed position is. Uh, when we look at two things, yes, God is in the here and now. And you'll get that. Uh, God is present. He is now. Uh, even in your mouth, the word of God is nigh thee. Even in your mouth. Somebody say, it's here. It's here. It is now, but there are times and there are seasons and there are situations where what? We must wait. Somebody said we must wait. We must wait. Uh, that's where we get into the uh, issue where we start to contrast. And, and I see some of you already uh, tightening up on me. Look at you. Your palms folded. You're, you're getting tight. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, you're getting tight on me. Why? Uh, because what you're, you're saying, are you getting ready to take me from now to wait? Somebody say yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, wait, but, but we got to make sense of this wait. Somebody said make sense of the wait. Which I'm telling you already is a problem. Some folks probably will turn us off now because Bishop just said, wait, oh Lord, I, that's the last thing I need to hear. I want to hear is what? Wait. Why? Because I want mine and I want it what? Now. Somebody say now. Uh, yet the shocking thing about it is uh, uh, that, that, that one of the uh, major things when we talk about wait, and I know this is a wisdom moment for some. Somebody say, here comes wisdom. One thing that people don't like, and this is shocking news, is that waiting takes time. <laughs> Somebody said waiting takes time. That's the thing about waiting that people don't like to deal with, right? Because waiting takes time. Uh, when you're waiting on something, it takes time. And many times in the wait, you don't know how much time it's going to take. Somebody said waiting takes time. Waiting is not easy, especially for what? Instant people. Waiting is not easy for instant people. Somebody said waiting is not easy for instant people. It's not easy for instant people. Why? Because we, we, we are microwave people. Uh, we're microwave people. What are we? We're, we're instant pudding people. <laughs> Uh, we, we are Jiffy Cornbread people. Uh, we're instant Jello people. We're, we're instant oatmeal people. 
We're instant grits. Uh, we don't want to put them in a pot and wait the five minutes for the for even the short term. We don't even want to do that. Just give me the package. Let me tear it open. Put it in a bowl and uh, put a little hot water in it or, or put some water and put it in the microwave. Uh, why? Because I don't want to go through all of that for no grits. I, I want it. Uh, I'm talking to Southerners now. I, I know some Northerners eat grits. I know some grits eating uh, Northerners. Just don't put no sugar in it. That's another story. Amen. We savory people down here. <laughs> we not sweet people. We're savory. Amen. Uh, that's another fight. We're not gonna have it. That's for another day. Uh, we're instant grit people. We're we're microwave popcorn people. Uh, we're eggs in a carton people. We don't even have time to crack or beat the egg. Uh, but put them in a put them in a, a, a carton for us. Uh, the, who are we? We are Amazon Prime people. Oh yeah. And we get excited. We go to quickening and speaking in tongues, especially if we see it can be delivered when? Today. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow, y'all y'all went to tomorrow. Uh, some folks in here, they knew today. Uh, uh, can this can be delivered today? We go to speak it in tongues. We get a new lease on life. Why? Because we can get it now. I want my package, and I want it now. Somebody say now. That's who we are, and that's why I buffet my body. Somebody say he buffets his body. I don't mean buffet my body. I mean, sometimes you see, it might look like I do that, but I buffet, I buffet it. What, what do I mean? What do I mean by buffet my body? I'm one of those who I still like slow popcorn. I still like to put my oil in the pan and in the pot and, and put the two kernels in there and wait for the two kernels kernels to pop before I know it's ready for the rest of the kernels and then wait for the popcorn shake it a little bit, wait for it uh, to pop up and I, I love to drizzle my own uh, uh, butter on it and I love to put my own seasonings on it uh, somebody said that takes time uh, I love to cook uh, most days, and, and I don't mind. This morning I had uh, boiled eggs and bagels for breakfast, and, and, and Lady and I, we had uh, uh, boiled eggs and, and bagels and, and a little applesauce for breakfast, uh, but, but, but it took time for those eggs to boil. Uh, I went sitting there watching them impatiently. No, I already know that it's going to take a certain amount of time. Uh, probably take about four to five minutes for that water to get up to boiling. And, and then after it gets up to boiling to get my eggs like I like them, about ten minutes boiling. Uh, and then my eggs are right. Why? Because I don't mind what? Waiting. Somebody say, I don't mind waiting. I, I don't mind with cracking my eggs and, and beating my eggs and, and fixing them. Why? Because I, I don't mind waiting. I, I'm going to come down some of y'all's aisle. Uh, uh, some of you, uh, even though you love Timu now, uh, you can't even wait for Timu because they take too long. Some of y'all go on Amazon to make sure... Make sure it ain't on Amazon before you order on Timu. Because even though it's a little cheaper on Timu, if they got it on Amazon, you know you can get it in a couple of days. As opposed to waiting a week or so or two for Timu. Uh, somebody say, but it's all right to wait. I don't mind cooking my grits. I don't mind uh, waiting. I don't mind getting my grits up to boil and, and, and making sure uh, that they don't stick and making sure that they don't lump up and, and then lowering the temperature down to about two and let it just simmer there for a while. Why? Because you got to make sure, you got to bring your body under subjection, bring your mind under subjection and bring yourself to a place where you don't mind waiting. The other reason why we get upset is because we feel like when we pray, uh, after we pray, as long as we are right, as long as we can do what? Hit the amen button and believe that it's going to be today. Uh, that's how some of us use the amen. We use it like a button. Amen. We think if we hit it. Amen. That means it's on the way. Uh, but let me tell you, prayers and God in Amazon. Just because you hit a uh, deliver today, just because you want it today, sometimes you got to wait because what? God is not God on demand. Somebody said God is not God 
on demand. Come on. God is not God on demand. I heard a pastor, Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley said, waiting is not a question of uh, uh, omnipotence, but, but it is waiting is a matter of sovereignty. Waiting is not a question of omnipotence, but waiting is a matter of sovereignty. It's not that God can't do it. It is that God going to do what God wants to do when God wants to do it. Why? Because Daryl Coley said it years ago, the late Daryl Coley said because he's sovereign. Somebody said because he's sovereign. He can do whatever God wants to do whenever God wants to do it. Oh, I need you to help me right now. Say God will do what God wants to do whenever God wants to do it. I love it because the old saints used to sing a song like this. You may not know it, but I know it. It said, you can't hurry God. You just have to wait. You have to trust him and give him time. No matter how long it takes, he's a God that you can't hurry. He'll be there. You don't have to worry. He may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. Somebody said God's on time. Uh, he's an on time God. Yes, he is. I I'm so glad that I, I have experienced even the last week that some things I was believing God for, I was praying for, I'd applied for, I'd put my name in the hat uh, for, and, and then I didn't get it. And I almost was about to get an attitude until God spoke to me in my spirit. You know what God said? Wait for it. Somebody said, wait for it. And so though I applied for it some months ago, it was just last week when I saw all of the stuff come, all of the uh, fans be hit. And then I realized God many times is saving us. Somebody said, saving us. He's saving us from some stuff. Sometimes what we think we want, uh, we don't realize it ain't good for us. Just because it looked good to us don't mean it's good for us. Somebody said, wait for it. Sometimes you got to just step back and wait and thank God for what? Unanswered prayer. Some of you have been through that in relationships where you look back and realize, whew, I dodged a bullet on that one. Uh, you're so glad, God, that, uh, you're so glad it didn't work out. You're so glad uh, it, got, it got God mixed up the plan. You're so glad that it didn't happen. Why? Because God was saving us. Somebody say, God, saving us. That's why Isaiah understands this in 40 and 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall do what? Mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Somebody said, wait, wait. Uh, we got to wait on the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. Tell somebody to wait on God. I know you want what you want, but this ain't Timu. I know what you want. You want what you want, but this ain't Amazon. I know you want what you want, but this ain't instant uh, fix. This ain't instant pot. I know what you want, uh, but tell somebody to wait on God. Wait on God. Job understood the power of wait on God. Job said, if a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. Somebody said, wait till your change comes. I'm here to tell you, it's coming. It's coming. All you got to do is what? Wait for it. Tell somebody to wait for it. All you got to do is wait for it. Wait for it. Let me give you three reasons why waiting is so important because there is purpose in waiting. Somebody said there's purpose in waiting. Uh, talking about 1 Samuel in our Bible study the other night with uh, Pastor Cotton and myself, uh, Bishop Cotton and myself going back and forth with these questions about Hannah and Penina. Talking about all that Hannah went through dealing with the agitation and the, the constant aggression uh, of Penina. But we realized three things in this process. These are the same three things that happen when we do what? Wait for it. Tell somebody to wait for it. One, it is an opportunity for what? Personal growth. I don't know whether you know it or not, but you're growing. Tell somebody I'm growing through this. 
I know it seems like I'm waiting, but you're growing through this. You're having a personal growth moment. We, we call it, uh, uh, in this uh, theory uh, uh, of this personal growth moment, it's the growth mindset. Somebody said the growth mindset. It's a growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. Fixed mindset say, I want it and I want it now. The growth mindset say, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind going through the pressure. I don't mind going through the struggle. I don't mind going through what it takes. Because when he has tried me, I shall come forth as what? Pure gold. Number two, the purpose of waiting is strengthening our character. Somebody said, my character is being strengthened. That my character is getting stronger. Uh, uh, for those of us that don't mind going through the process, it's building character. Somebody said, God is building character in me. God is building character in me. It's a character building process. It's a strengthening of my character. It's a, it's a growing of my character. It's an increasing and deepening of my character. Uh, uh, what I want to understand, us to understand, uh, some people get in positions where their character can't sustain them. Uh, uh, really, you got to understand, you don't want to be in a position uh, until your character is ready. So some of us get in positions and then realize, and we see it all the time, they got it, but their character couldn't stand it. Right, because you start to see uh, all the character flaws. You start to see all of the mishaps. Why? Because so many times we don't wait until our character is ready. And the third thing is that happens or happens with purpose of waiting is it's a deepening of our faith. Somebody said my faith is getting deepened. My faith is going deep. My faith is getting stronger. Uh, so it's an opportunity for personal growth. It's a strengthening of our character. And it's a deepening of our faith. Somebody say, God is doing it. God is doing it. That's why I wait on the Lord. That's why I know that when I wait like I told you, Isaiah uh, lets us to know it renews our strength. God renews our strength. That's why I don't mind. Somebody say, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting as long as I'm waiting on the Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting as long as I know I'm waiting on the Lord. Tell somebody I'm waiting on the Lord. I ain't waiting on you. See, that's the beauty of it. I ain't waiting on somebody uh, uh, that done told me something. I'm not waiting on something that's come from outside in. I'm waiting on something that's come from inside out. Tell somebody wait for it. Uh, and so we wait for it. Somebody say, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I, I don't mind waiting for it. I don't mind waiting. We wait for it. Why? Because God knows what's best for us. Somebody say, God knows what's best for me. But at this point, I realize that some of you are tripping. Some of you are tripping. Uh, because you've been talking to yourself and something that juxtaposed position in your mind is freaking you out because you're up here saying in your mind, well, wait a minute. Uh, he's been saying, wait for God, wait for God. But yet the, the subject is wait for it. Uh, are you saying in your mind, he's saying, wait for God. He's been telling us what happens when we wait on the Lord. You told me they that wait on the Lord shall renew them. You told me uh, about waiting on the Lord, but you said your subject is to wait for it. Somebody said, wait for it. Uh, well, well, let me just tell you uh, that, that when we wait for it, it is that which comes to us by way of understanding. Why? Because you ask yourself, well, what is the it. What is the it that we are waiting for? You, uh, now you switched on me. Uh, you got another position. What is the it? Well, I'm going to answer that question. The it is everything that comes with God. Remember the text says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. It says it again, wait for the Lord. When we wait for the Lord, what happens is when we wait for the Lord, we get everything that comes with God. All of the it that comes with God, we get. It's like when you're waiting for that Uber. Uh, you don't wait for an Uber when you call an Uber. When you're waiting for an Uber, you don't wait for the Uber and look for a bicycle. Why? Because when you call an Uber, you know a car is coming. Matter of fact, you've already seen, they told you what to look for. Oh, 
That's a message in that. God has already told you. Some of you have already gotten a vision. God has already given you a glimpse into what you're waiting for. Somebody say, I know what I'm waiting for. Oh, I know when I travel, many times I use Uber. I travel, I love Uber. When I try, when I'm away, uh, many times and I don't drive. Uh, and I always know what to look for. I know what's coming. I know what God has said. And you and I know what I've ordered, everything I've ordered, what comes with the driver, I get it. What do I get when the driver shows up? The driver's car. Somebody said, everything that comes with God is the it. Everything that comes with God is what we get. And when we see, you say, well, how does the text help me with this it? I'm going to tell you in the next few minutes, give me about five more minutes. If you look at the text, David in this text, the triumphant song of a a confident David, what we see is an outline of all the it that comes with God. Notice at the end he says, oh, some of y'all got it already. (laughs) At the end he says, wait for the Lord and be strong and let your heart uh, take courage. Wait for the Lord. But but you say, what what is the it that I'm waiting for? Uh, Bishop, I'm going to tell you, uh, let's go through it. Start at verse 1. The it is that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Tell somebody, that's it, that's it. That's it. What is the it? The it is the Lord is the stronghold of my life. The it is that when evildoers and adversaries come against me, the it is they stumble. Oh, some of y'all got it. Oh, we ready to roll now. They stumble and fall. The it is, verse 3, my heart shall not fear. That's what it is. My heart shall not fear. Yet, verse 3, I will be confident. That's what the it is. Verse 4, the it is to live in the house of the Lord all of the days of my life and to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. Tell somebody, that's it. That's it. The it is that he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent uh, of the uh, of that will set me on high under his tent and will set me on high. Somebody said, that's it. He's going to set me on a rock. Uh, the it is my head is lifted up above my enemies. The it is I will sing and make melody to the Lord. The it is uh, hear, O oh Lord, when I cry, be gracious unto me and answer me. Somebody said, that's it, that's it. Uh, the it is is verse 9 not hide your face from me that's what he will do he will not hide just a few more just a few more now anybody ready somebody y'all ready for it tell somebody wait for it here it comes uh, why because the, it is the kingdom of God that's what it is what is the kingdom it is righteousness it is peace it is joy in the Holy Ghost What is it? Somebody said, all of this comes with God. What is it? It is the fruit of the Spirit. Somebody said, that's what it is. What's the fruit of the Spirit? It is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Tell somebody, that's what it is. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let me give you just a couple more. You say, well, what else is it? Ask your neighbor, what else is it? Tell them, yeah, well, I hope Bishop tell me what else it is. It is the gift of the Spirit. Somebody say, yes, it is. Somebody say, it's the gift of the Spirit. I know we don't get them all, but, but God knows who got what. God knows who to give what to. Somebody say, it is. What's the gift of the Spirit? One, it's the message of wisdom. The other thing, it is the message of knowledge. The other thing it is, is faith. Somebody said faith. Tell somebody, that's it, that's it. For somebody else, it's gift of healing. For somebody else, it's to do miracles, the power to do miracles. Uh, So somebody else, it's the ability to prophesy. So somebody else, it's the ability to tell the spirits apart. And to somebody else, it's the ability to speak with different kinds of tongues. Tell somebody, that's it, that's it. But to somebody else, it's the ability to explain what was said in those tongues. Tell somebody, that's it. Let me give you one more. 
and we going home just about it. We going, we going, we going. What else is it? It is this. It is the whole armor of God. Come on, we moving. It's the whole armor of God. How do I know what it is? He tells us in Ephesians 6, he said, put on the whole armor of God. Tell somebody, that's what it is. And when you put on the armor of God, you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Tell somebody, that's what it is. I need it. I need it. I need it. Tell somebody, I need it. When you say, well, Bishop, you told me to put on the armor. But just in case I don't have somebody or got somebody who don't know, what's the armor? It is the belt of truth. It is the breastplate of righteousness. It is feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. It is the shield of faith. It is the helmet of salvation. It is the sword of the spirit. More than that, it is what this is. What is praying in the spirit. Tell somebody, pray in the spirit. In case you're wondering, that's the armor of God. Tell somebody, I'm putting it on. Tell somebody, put it on. How do we have it? Because everything that comes with God, we got it. Somebody say, we got it, we got it. And let me just tell you, because I left you a little hurt earlier when I said that God is the God that helps us to wait. But let me take you back to the now. With the fruit of the Spirit, with the gifts of the Spirit, with the armor of God, with the kingdom of God, it is now. And in the kingdom, no one waits for the fruit of the Spirit. For every believer, no one waits. Come on, for the gifts of the Spirit, no one waits. For the helmet of salvation, you don't have to wait. Somebody say, you don't have to wait. Why? Because all you got to do is trust him. You can't hurry, God. Trust him. God knows. The song says, Jesus knows all about my struggles. He will guide until the day is done. the lowly Jesus. No, 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 not one. Tell somebody, no, not one. Jesus knows. He knows. Tell him he knows. He knows. God knows what you have need of. You don't have to wait. The song says don't wait till the battle is over. You can shout right now. Tell somebody, don't wait. I know we said wait for it, but I gave you what you needed to wait for. And now that you're waiting for it, you know, tell somebody, I've got it. The victory, I've got it. Peace, I've got it. Joy, I've got it. Salvation, I've got it. Healing, I've got it. Oh, I know you got it. Somebody say, I got healing. I got deliverance. What God gave me, this joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. Tell somebody I feel like shouting. Tell somebody I feel like praising. Tell somebody because I got it. And I got it now. I got the love of Jesus down in my heart. I got the love down in my heart. ready to praise him. Tell somebody, we can praise him now. We don't have to wait. You can praise him now. Tell somebody, I know what I got. Go around and shake somebody's hand and tell them, you got it. 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 Tell them, I got it. 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 I know I got it. Oh, I feel a prayer. 